This is blue. Okay, very good. And that part works. We've got 10 superchargers. Hello, this is Blue Leader, and we're here at the Rancho Cucamonga Supercharging Station, where there is a total of 10 superchargers at 150 kV. Does that say 150? My glasses aren't on. Yeah. Let me do that one more time. Hello, this is Blue Leader, and we're here at the Rancho Cucamonga Supercharging Station, where they have a total of 10 superchargers at 150 kV. And we are joined today by... Nebula the Tesla. That's your Insta handle? Yes. Okay, spell it out for us real quick. N-E-B-U-L-A the T-H-E Tesla. T-E-S-L-A. And we're here in Rancho, but we met where? Remind we, me. We actually met at the Madonna Inn in San Luis Obispo for the uh, Tesla Takeover event. Tesla Takeover. Very cool. Um, you had your car, the car I'm about to show right now. You had your car in the custom Tesla section. Did I get that right? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, for those of you that don't know, I think there were like 300, 400, 500, 600 plus. There was several hundred Teslas that almost broke the official world record for most Teslas in one place. And most of the people were parked out on the lawn of the Madonna Inn in San Luis Obispo. Now, Nebula, the Tesla's car, was parked in a special zone where they had custom Teslas. And why don't you tell us all about why your car was in the custom Tesla zone? So, uh, my car is wrapped. Uh, it's a custom wrap uh, with a matte finish of the Galaxy. And I had a friend who had told me about the event and said that I, I must come out and showcase the car. And I was a little hesitant at first, but it turned out to be a really fun event and it was really great being able to showcase the car and um, all the little kids who were fascinated by the wrap. Now, what got you into wrapping your car, number one, and what got you into wrapping your car with that design? <laughs> so, uh, originally, I, the color of my car was a midnight blue. And, and it was it was a great it was a great color but I wanted to do something crazy there are very few moments in our lives where we do something that we want to do for ourselves so this was one thing where I decided you know it's my car and I can be creative with it so uh, it crossed my mind to wrap my car in a purple velvet um, color at first and that idea kind of stuck in my head for months and I couldn't get it out of my head so I started talking to a lot of friends and asking them where they go to get their cars wrapped and sure enough I got referred to Raptopus and Omar did a fantastic job on my car but um, when I first met up with him I told him about how I wanted a purple a velvet purple wrap um, with a 3M vinyl wrap and uh, we were looking through the sketchbook and he brought up the idea of like hey why don't you consider doing a custom wrap and uh, we went through a lot of the designs that he had and we just flipped through them for I think it was like 15 20 minutes and we just kept flipping through designs and he had this really cool system that showed what it would look like and the exact print that was on the computer was the exact print that showed up on the car so it's very accurate but we were just flipping through these and then the uh, the galaxy print that I have on my car now showed up and something in my head heart brain whatever you want to think uh, just said stop like that's that's it like this is what I want to do and as crazy and as wild as the rap may seem um, I just I just went for it because again I mean it's it's just it's fun so um, I dropped my car off and Omar got it all wrapped up and when I picked it up I was blown away I <laughs> kept it in my garage for two days right after the wrap because it was just, it took a lot of adjustment. <laughs> um, it's not a car you can just casually drive to Trader Joe's now without getting 50 eyes looking at you. So, um, so it took a little bit of adjustment, but it is a fantastic wrap and it's, it's beautiful. I love it. Now I've known a lot of people that have gotten their car wrapped in like a solid color, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or one tone. You got it in, what can we call it? Like a, <laughs> pattern a design a photograph what, what is that 
multi-tone. It's the galaxy. It is literally it's the nebula. galaxy. It's very <laughs> layered, lots of light, lots of darkness, yeah. mostly purple-ish. So like you said, <laughs> you, you get eyes on it. What type of attention have you gotten from driving that car? Uh, well, you do get the typical person who stares and is either fascinated. I can't really tell from the expression. They're either fascinated or horrified. No, I'm kidding. But um, most of the time, it's people who are just amazed that the car is wrapped the way that it is. And I think that's because a lot of people are kind of scared to step outside of the boundaries of what they think is normal. So um, I get a lot of surprised faces or a lot of shocked faces. There are people who like rush to pull out their cell phones and take pictures. Um, and then, but my favorite type of attention is when the little kids come up to my car and they yank on their parents' hand and they go, look, it's the galaxy car. Um, I, the galaxy car. Yeah. As they, if they've seen it before? Uh, no, not necessarily, but it's just the print is a, is a giveaway okay. for it, like galaxy print. Um, and they, they love it. And so then the kids always ask, like, can I take a picture with your car? And it's the sweetest thing ever to be able to say, like, yes, like, go and, you know, you can look inside if you want to. But um, I haven't done anything cool on the inside yet. So this car design that you've wrapped around your Tesla Model S, it mm -hmm. sounds like it brings a level of joy to some people, some surprise, a little bit of inspiration. Yeah. I, I would definitely say so. I think, um, I think inspiration um, is definitely a consequence of the rap. I have gotten a lot of friends who have messaged me and said, hey, like, where did you get your car wrapped? I'm thinking about doing this, but I didn't know if it was like too crazy or too broad to do. Or, um, so it's, it's always great to be able to tell your friends, like, yeah, like, go do it. It's fun. It's not a big deal. Um, and the guy who wrapped my car is fantastic, so, yeah. Very nice. Is, you mentioned you, you, you plan on doing stuff on the inside. What are you thinking about? What, what are, where's your vision on that? Well, uh, this will be kind of in the future, but um, I was thinking about doing a starlight uh, roof, so that way it matches the galaxy theme inside and out. Mm. Um, I was also thinking about putting in some underglow um, of the softer like galaxy tones. So there's there's a lot of pink and purple and blue um, in the wrap. So those would kind of be the softer tones that I would have for the uh, for the lighting inside the car. But mostly, next up on my list is definitely the the galaxy uh, trim for the roof. You mean for the the headliner that you have? Yes. So there's going to be like light, like starlight. Oh wow! Yeah, I've yeah. seen that. It'll very be nice. It'll yeah. be very cool. Yeah, it'll be pretty fun. Um, if anyone wants to do it, just message me on Instagram. <laughs> okay, so this part might be a little choppy, so I'm going to edit this part. Oh yeah. As we go, um, how come you have an Instagram account of mm -hmm. Nebula the Tesla? What is? Do you have a goal? Do you have a vision for what you want that to be, or where you want that to go? So. Um, it's it's kind of an interesting story actually but uh well first of all i had a lot of friends who were kind of motivating me to uh, promote the car and kind of put it out there but the original goal was to be able to rent the car out on turo um so being able to make an instagram page for it would provide a lot of exposure for the car um, and help it get rent it out for anyone who wants a cool car for their music videos or for their night out or if they want to know what it feels like uh, to get a lot of eyes on you um, or for those fancy nights. So I put my car up for, for rent on Turo and the Instagram page was a means to be able to promote the car a little bit more but uh, the car is definitely growing on me a little too much now so. wait a sec so someone can rent your car out or yes now on Turo yeah very nice okay some of us have not been exposed to Turo so tell us how easy it is to find your car on Turo so Turo is this app that you have on your phone you can think of it as enterprise without the enterprise price <laughs> um, and it's a lot of it's a collection of people from the community who offer up their car for rent 
um, at a lower cost. You can communicate with the owners of the vehicle directly if the, you have any special requests. They can deliver the cars. Um, but essentially, it's like an enterprise app, if you will, um, where you can rent out other people's cars. And it's really easy to do. It's, uh, it's almost like ordering an Uber, so to speak. So it's, it's very convenient. So how much would someone have to pay you to rent out the Nebula Model S? So Nebula the Tesla is on Turo for $199 a day. Um, and that's how much, it, how much it goes for for, for a day. <laughs> uh, have you got any feedback from someone that has rented it out? Um, I haven't I haven't rented it out quite yet because it's been kind of on the back burner with school. Um, this part might want to get cut out. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll rewind that. Okay, so... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I haven't uh, had time A couple to... <laughs> paragraphs ago, you could, they, they can rent it out. Though, yeah, they but can. But you haven't rented it out. Yeah, no, because it's... Uh, you put it on hold or something, like pause or... It's... Um, no, I... My Turo account doesn't yeah. work, so I put it on my brother's uh, Turo account because he has a GTR. Okay. So he rents out his GTR, but he put mine on there. But um, but they can still find it with Nebula the Tesla. Uh, I don't think it'll come up as Nebula the Tesla on Turo. Okay, so no one can find it, can find Nebula the Tesla on Turo. No, but there is a direct link to the Turo uh, okay. page on the Instagram page. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Okay. All right, so how can someone find oh how can someone find a means to rent out Nebula the Tesla? So it's really easy to do if you go onto the Instagram page Nebula the Tesla. In the description box, there will be a link where it'll take you directly to the Turo page um, so that you can rent out Nebula the Tesla for your next night out. Very nice. And tell us a little bit about what's underneath that awesome wrap. It's a Tesla Model S. What year? Uh, it's a 2014 Tesla Model S P85. Um, and P85. P85. P stands for what? I don't know. It stands for performance. <laughs> okay. So it's it's the it's 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 uh, Tesla fast, and then there's performance fast. Okay. So it's very fast. Yes, yes it is. Very I've fast. Never floored it. Have you gone fast on that car? Before? No. <laughs> you should. You should you should floor well, it. Well, I was in the car one time when my brother floored it and I can tell you I had the wind knocked out of me. Yeah. So it's I'd pretty imagine. fast. But uh, but yeah, it's a Tesla P performance eighty five. Um, and it's fully loaded, so it does have autopilot, summon, auto park, um, and it also has a little chiller cabinet so there's a couple of you watching out there they're like oh you know I'm thinking of getting a Tesla or maybe I should get a Toyota Prius or uh, <laughs> no. something like that check out our car rent it out not many people have a P85 or a P anything in Tesla yeah. and give it a whiz bang pay 200 bucks enjoy your day enjoy your night get some eyes on you and uh, maybe that'll change your mind maybe it won't who knows but you'll never know till you find out yeah. all right so tell us about your journey into getting you in this uniform <laughs> um, well um, I well I'm in podiatric medical school right now but the way that I got here uh, was kind of a long windy story um, but to keep it short I graduated high school and decided to pursue business so I was a business major and I worked as a life insurance agent for about two and a half years um, I got my real estate license did all of, uh, did all of that um, but in my experience with working with life insurance I encountered a lot of families um, sorry can I I'll restart but do I look at you or look at the camera <laughs> It's too late. There's so much of the interview oh, where you looked here, <laughs> and I'm looking at you. So oh, let's 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 okay. We I should look at each that. other. That's okay, because I wasn't sure. <laughs> where were we? Uh, the story. But. The story. So yeah. you got uh, your real estate license. Yes. Right, and then what happened? So I got my real estate license, and um, but I also pursued 
life insurance. So mm -hmm. I became a life insurance agent and sold life insurance for about two and a half years. Whole or term? Uh, both, actually. Well, and well, we well, sold annuities too. Uh, oh, annuities. We'll get to that in a sec. Let, let's <laughs> go into your past life. Was it, did you have a goal of selling either term or whole or it didn't matter? What, what was, was the thing? It was whichever was the best fit for the client. Okay. Some people, whole term worked better for their needs. Yeah. Other people preferred term life insurance, and that's what we gave them. Very cool. So. If you guys don't know what whole or term life insurance is, <laughs> you're in trouble. You need to yes. know the difference <laughs> because something can happen to you. I yes. mean, do you still sell it? Are you still licensed to sell? I'm not licensed to sell, but I do have a lot of uh, family friends who are still in the business. Yeah, their link's in the description. <laughs> Yeah, some can happen to you. Like if people are yeah. dependent on you financially, yeah. uh, they could be in a world of hurt yeah. if something bad happens to you. God forbid. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, but yeah, uh, so I sold life insurance for about two and a half years, and during that time, I think my my worldview or my world bubble kind of got burst a little uh, because typically you would sell life insurance to a variety of folks, but. Um, a lot of my clients were actually low income mm, clients. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them, and I think one of the pivot stories of my life was meeting an elderly woman who was purchasing life insurance and it was probably one of the easiest sales I've made. Mm. Um, and it just made me really curious why she was purchasing life insurance and she could no longer afford her insulin medication. So she was preparing for her death and that oh. kind of struck my my core and made me question uh, the society that we live in and you know how how people are living um, and so that kind of drove me to want to pursue uh, global medicine initially and I sure enough did go back to school I went to UCSD for undergrad originally as a global health major and then I switched to public health because I learned there was a lot of politics. So you had a, a, a bachelor's degree before, or this was your getting your first bachelor's? I was getting my first bachelor's and then I decided to work because uh, work experience is more valuable in the business world than a business degree. Sure. Um, people in the business world often ask what kind of experience do you have? They don't necessarily ask you what kind of degrees do you have? Mm -hmm. Do you have your master's? Um, I've never been asked that question when I was pursuing business. So that's where I focused my effort was getting to those jobs that could, that have a lot of, um, uh, you have a lot of ability to move. Very within. cool. You know what? I, I know we were talking about your journey, but a lot of things are clicking, mm -hmm. especially life work experience versus college education. Yeah. Okay, because what's been really popular for I think at least 20 years are people going back to get an MBA degree, mm -hmm. right? All kinds of schools are accepting them. You know, it's a really cool thing to have. You study great stuff. Yeah. But a lot of them, oh, how can I say? Do you have, first of all, do you have an opinion on getting an MBA degree? Um, I mean, it, it really depends on person so I think for me personally education is I think is vital but at the same time there's it really depends on what the person does with the experience so right. you can go to school you can go to Harvard and get uh, a PhD even and go all the way to that level and still end up in a job that you don't want or in a situation you don't want or just flat out not be able to find a job period and I think the difference is what you do with the experience of school so school itself is not a um, you know it's not it's not a guarantee nothing in life is a guarantee right but uh, with education what you do with the knowledge that you gain it's supposed to help you also build character which which is where I think a lot of people have a fallout with with education is uh, we have this assumption that if, if I go to school, if I get this degree, I'll be successful. I will have all of these things. But what you really need to ask is, is the degree that I'm pursuing helping me build the character that I need to become the person I want to be? So uh, as long-winded as it seems, 
you can struggle in a class and say, well, how is this helping me in the, in the big picture? How is it helping me in the real world? When in reality, it should be teaching you that you might be taking a class that you don't like, but it's building discipline. It's building the discipline to be able to finish the class, to be able to learn the content, and then also learn how you can motivate yourself in situations where you're not motivated. Because even when you do what you love doing, there are days where you want to give up. You want to just say, I don't know if I actually want this anymore. But um, with discipline, you can get past those days and continue on your journey to success. But um, that's kind of my opinion on school is it, it really depends on what the person does with the degree, the education, the classes. Um, with that being said, there's also a lot of people who didn't go to school and that's not something to be frowned upon, which I think is also a common misconception is like, if you didn't get a degree, then that's, that's bad and you're not a successful person in society. But um, the truth is, is, you know, it, it really just, what if you have a passion or a drive for something else that's outside of school? School is meant to be a guiding tool, but it's not meant to be a, a guarantee of where you'll get to. So. That's something I had to learn when I got my first degree was, wow, where's where's the red carpet? <laughs> where's, where's the red carpet? Where's yeah. my secretary? I had to find out, well, that that's... That's that was maybe all in your head. Yeah. Maybe someone wasn't honest enough to tell you. You actually have to maybe maybe start from zero in yeah. the real world. And uh, what do you call it? Oh, I just lost it. <laughs> start over. Start from scratch. You probably yeah. have to start from scratch at that point and uh, gain your own experience. Okay, I'll re-edit that part. I just lost <laughs> what I was going to say. You have to carve out your own place. Yes. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, so you've got this education going on. How long do you have until school is finished? So I am in my second year of podiatric medical school. It's a four-year program for the medical degree, and then it's a three-year residency. So seven years in total, um, and we are about one and a half years down. So... What does that mean, one and a half years down? So I finished my first year, and now I'm in my second year. Very cool. So, yeah, so we've, we've got about six years, five and a half years left to go. So podiatry, did I pronounce that right? Yeah. Podiatry. Why did you want to specialize in the area of the feet? So uh, that that one was pretty, pretty interesting. So I was um, shadowing a lot of physicians when I learned that I wanted to do something in the healthcare field, which is where I found passion. Um, and one of the people that I shadowed was an orthopedic technic technician, actually. He wasn't uh, an orthopedic surgeon or anything, but, um, but he had a profound effect on my life. Mm. He showed me all of the tools that were used in orthopedic surgery, and I was mind blown. Um, mind you, medicine was a new world for me coming from business. So mm. um, I was very... Um, curious I guess and so there was a lot to learn but that was one experience that really stuck with me so I, I learned that I was really interested in orthopedic surgery and um, I learned about the field and it's 14 years of training after wow. undergraduate degree so uh, yeah so it's it's a lot it's a four year uh, four years for medical school and then it's a three-year residency plus a two-year fellowship which about yeah maybe not 14 <laughs> so to the long time. to the lay person what could we expect you working on what type of medical situations would you help a person so for the most part um, podiatric uh, surgeons work on um, a lot of diabetic foot cases mm. so uh, people with diabetes have something called neuropathy which means they can't feel things that are happening to their foot so they'll get things called ulcers um, which is, it's basically like a, a blister that becomes infected and it can go to the bone and cause something called osteomyelitis, which is life threatening. Um, those are a lot of the cases, but they also do work on, it's, it's essentially, it's all of medicine. So you could work on congenital deformities. So, uh, you could work in pediatrics with babies. You can work with the elderly. You can also work with, um, sports. So sports medicine is, is a big field for podiatry. 
uh, there's a lot of variation so it's it's exactly everything that you would uh, receive from the medical system but more specifically for the foot so um, ballerinas require podiatrists like no tomorrow um, wow. but just everything everything so preventative care surgical um, uh, even cosmetic too so your bunions <laughs> bunions okay if you don't your like bunions. the look of your bunions <laughs> your... you know oh, wow fantastic yeah. I, I never looked at it that way uh, yeah. I never I, I just take for granted my feet are gonna work yes yes we we do take and uh, you know we take our feet for granted that's for sure <laughs> very nice okay um, what we talked about your car we talked about your new journey in education and where that is leading to is there anything else that you could think of you want to share with the world um, well the one thing that I will say is don't be afraid to push the envelope so if there's something that you're even moderately interested in um, whether it's car design or career choice uh, be willing to go outside of your comfort zone because that's where growth happens so that seems like a theme for you getting out of your comfort zone <laughs> that's like the, the the unifying theme between getting a car that is out of it's in another <laughs> zone okay, I'm doing this because it's over there yeah. and and um, doing a career educational change yeah. right that was uh, did you see that coming or not <gasps> not at all <laughs> no when I was in high school I I really thought that I was gonna pursue business my whole life yeah. and work on Wall Street <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah that's very far from reality but I love my reality so it, it works out <laughs> very cool all right thank you so much this is Blue Leader, and this is... Nebula the Tesla. And we'll see you soon, maybe on... What's the name of the app that people can rent? Turo. <laughs> Turo. Look for Nebula the Tesla on Turo. Yes. See you later. Go support my medical education. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. Hit that... Uh... Congrats. You made it to the end. Comment your electric thoughts and share with your circle of trust. Thanks for letting us supercharge your Tesla destination. See you at our next super destination.